You're waking up with Rich Inferno on TDQ Breakfast, a part of your life. On TDQ Breakfast, it's Pet Talk, 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 with nothing to say. Now you can't hide the smile on your face, Maddie. I can't hide the smile on my face, even though we're not in the studio together. Smiling, smiling away. You can hear me smiling. They're smiling. QR codes. Quick response from Monday. No matter what we do, we're going to have to flash our uh, cell phone in front of this little square. Quick mm. response. Quick response. Uh, on a on a level from a business person, is this a good idea? Well, it's probably hard for businesses to maintain the thoroughness of every person coming in the door and make sure you've got your QR code scanned. And think of people like maybe a delivery person. Every business they walk into, yep. scan Pain the QR the code, check out when you leave. It's going to double the delivery times for that person to get around and do their delivery run. And the reality of that delivery person being in and out for 30 seconds, it's probably not likely they're going to hang around and pick up COVID from someone else in there. I suppose the real issue for me, Richard, is in regional areas, we've been very good in terms of a lack of COVID, but we're still being mm. penalised and lumped in with the rest of the state. Yeah, which is ridiculous, you know, way out northwest of uh, New South Wales. Uh, the same goes for Western Australia, of course, way up in the Ord River, nothing goes on. It was uh, invented in 1994 by a guy called Masahiro Hara from the Japanese company Denzo Wave. Uh, why? Why was he commissioned to do this? I guess he was an employee and he was told, Masahiro, uh, invent this thing. What was the reason? Yeah, well, if you go back a bit further, 51, 1951, the barcode was invented. Didn't yeah. know what to do with it. 1974, Wrigley's Chewing Gum was the first ever product yeah. to have a barcode on it. That was great. I still have a packet of it. I still have a packet. <laughs> Good work. That was great. You only had 12 numeric characters. And as it went forward, car manufacturers actually thought they wanted to be able to track all the individual components that went into cars, especially as cars became more customised. Hence the QR code, because you don't have 12 numeric characters on a QR code. You can have about 4,000 alphanumeric characters on a QR code. And that was what they right. wanted, more information. All right. Now, we look at our QR card, a code, and I'm looking at one now. It just looks like a black and white puzzle. It's very clear, actually. The encoding that goes into that, you're exactly right. It looks like a black and white puzzle. And the, all those different squares and the way they're made up actually is the encoding process to be able to pack in 4,000 characters into that one square. Now, it doesn't always have 4,000 characters. It can have fewer than that. But the fact that it can fit that many into that one little square is quite incredible. It's nothing to be scared of. The QR code is really just the same as if anything was written. If it was a website, for example, it's mm. just a convenient way for a computer to be able to read that. The difference is that you and I don't know what's behind that QR code when we scan it. So we just have to be careful of what happens what after behind, we scan that. Matt? What do you mean behind it? Well, for example, you could go into a cafe and think that you're scanning a QR code to be able to enter that cafe. Someone could come along and put a sticker over the cafe's QR code without the staff necessarily noticing it, and that QR code could take you to a website that's got a virus on it, for example, so it's trying to infect your phone with a virus, or a website that tries to give you information that's not the correct information. So it's called spoofing or QR code spoofing, where you're actually putting something over the top of it. So you just have to be aware when you scan the QR code, don't just scan it and blindly click yes or OK on whatever comes up. Scan it and actually have a look at your phone to see where you're being taken to. In New South Wales, for example, when you scan that QR code, it should open the Service New South Wales app. And if it does that, you go, well, I can feel that I I trust that. But I actually went into one store, scanned the QR code, and the store name was wrong. When they'd registered themselves, a friend had actually done it for them, and they'd registered a different store or a number of different stores. So it wasn't actually doing anything useful because it was just... Well, well, that's a point, isn't it, Matty Dickerson? Because some stores are, if you like, a facade name, a joke name, or a trade name. The business behind it could be of a different name, and they could register it on that business. Like Matthew Dickerson, Proprietary Limited, you run a a shop, say, uh, say, hardware up yours or whatever, you know? So... (laughs) So it could track back to a business code, couldn't it? A business it, name. The, na- the name of the shop you're walking into is not necessarily the name of the company that may own a chain of those short stores. That's right. And someone could, at head office, for example, say, oh, we better get registered for QR codes. They do that for all their franchises, as an example. Next thing yep. you know, each one you walk into is only really tracking 
against one. So walking to in that franchise in Dubbo or Orange or Sydney, it's only tracking back to one. Now, hopefully businesses are aware of this, but I, again, I have seen this example happen at least once that I know of personally where yeah. I scanned it, and it wasn't actually looking at that particular business because a friend had done it for them and they'd done it for a number of businesses. They didn't realise that that QR code was specific to that particular business. So it's Let's just being paranoid. aware of it. But who else can get? I mean, can you go into a dark web or can you go into a dungeon somewhere and can somebody that you don't know and the business doesn't know pick up on the information on your QR? Well, this is the the real issue here, Richard. When you scan that QR code, and let's say New South Wales, we go to Service New South Wales app, it then gets stored on a server that the New South Wales government maintains. Now, you would hope that they're all maintained securely, but on that server has got your name, your phone number, and where you've been. So some people don't necessarily want that information out there. It shouldn't be out there. If there is an incident where someone has a, a contact with COVID-19, then all the people in that database can be scoured. Oh, we found these 20 people that were in contact in that same business. Let's let them know. Theoretically, that data is then wiped from that database after 28 days. But yeah, we've seen, really? Yeah, well, this is the thing. We've seen over the last year two data breaches with New South Wales government databases or servers where they've actually been hacked and information has been leaked out there onto, as you say, the dark web. So you want to make sure that whoever you're using to store that QR code information, you've got some trust and faith in. The store itself can't see that information and it shouldn't be able to either. The New South Wales government's got that, but you want to hope they're doing it securely. Yeah, you want to make sure you don't go into a place where you shouldn't be. <laughs> Maybe that as well. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. Uh, w- uh, you know, what about if you live in uh, Tweed Heads and you cross the border into Cool and Gadda? Can you use the same QR code or Aubrey Wodonga? What about well, that? this is the other problem, Richard. We had a QR code or, or an app called COVID Safe. There was a national app. Now it was using Bluetooth technology rather than QR codes, and it can I say it mildly, has been a dismal failure. So far, we've spent in the vicinity of $8 million as a nation on this app. And then all the states just went and did their own thing. So in New South Wales, we've got Service New South Wales app. In Queensland, you've got a different app. In Victoria, a different app. So each state has said, well, that COVID safe app didn't work very well. We'll do our own thing. And it just seems crazy that we're duplicating that same infrastructure across the entire nation rather than using one common app across the nation. So, so if I'm a truckie and I go to Broken Hill, uh, take a load, but I've got to go over the border into South Australia, my QR code is no good in South Australia. Is that right? Well, not the QR code. It's the app that you use to read that QR code. So you right. walk across the border into Queensland or South Australia, you scan a QR code. Oh, right up. You don't have the right app for that QR code. You need the app that's specific to that state. So it will just come up and it will give you information about How ridiculous another app you've got to download. Now ridiculous. We are the divided uh, states of Australia, aren't we? Well, Matt? that's the thing, isn't it? It just we are too small a nation in terms of population mm. to duplicate all these resources. I mean, we do it now with drivers' licences, with registrations, with so many different things. But with COVID, surely we could have gotten together. The government tried it, but they did such a bad job of it. The states gave yeah. up on them. Yeah, well, it's a dog's breakfast, really. So these kick in on uh, Monday. Do you think it's going to stop browsing? I mean, why would I bother going into a shop? I want to have, just have a quick look and see what they've got. Is that going to stop that? Well, I already had an incident the other day, Richard, where I, I ran into a lady and she was complaining to me that she went to go to a cafe and her phone was flat, so she just left it in her car to charge up while she did some shopping, went to no. go into a cafe. Sorry, you don't have your phone now. They're meant to allow you to check in other ways. This one wasn't set up to do that, so they just turned her away at the door. So they lost, a, I don't know, a coffee, maybe a meal at that cafe because they didn't have that ability to scan her in and she didn't have a phone with her. So I think you're right, just walking to a shop, having a bit of a look around, oh, I couldn't be bothered doing that, I've got to scan my QR code. Yeah, it's all starts Monday too. Good luck with businesses, good luck with that QR code, that funny little thing, and uh, you, you can blame quick response on that. Matty Dickerson, have a nice day somehow <laughs> anyway. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Starts Monday, every shop, everywhere you go. QR, 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 QR. 8 o'clock.